starting off with squats. The reason I've angled the camera from my side is so you can see the bar path. And when you are squatting, you want to make sure that the bar is moving up and down in a straight line above the middle of your foot without a lot of deviation. This is my working set. And I've done two warm-up sets before this, where my first warm-up set is using one plate. Then I would add a 10 on each side. I would also do opening and closing the gates as well as leg swings to open up my hips. And I found ever since the weather has been warming up, I don't find my knees clicking as much and my hips feeling as tight. And that's obviously just due to the heat. And the warmer it is, the more loose your muscles are going to be. Whereas during winter, I would find I would have to warm up for maybe a couple extra sets. I am doing the high bar squat. And when you are high bar squatting or squatting in general, you do want to make sure that your upper body remains straight and that your back doesn't round out. And the way I ensure this is by bracing my core, which means that I take a deep breath at the top of the movement and hold my breath on the way down. This helps keep everything stable. Then I'll exhale as I'm pushing the weight back up. It's also helpful to imagine your chin being parallel to the floor or looking slightly above or upwards to make sure that you are squatting upwards and downwards in a straight line. Because if you are looking downwards, this means that when you are squatting and you're pushing on the way up, it becomes very easy to lose balance and start tipping forward, which is obviously something you don't want to be doing, especially when you've got a decent amount of weight on your back. And on this set here where I've got two plates and a five, it's the first time I haven't belled on the fourth rep and I do want to get six reps for that weight. So it is only another two reps that I can aim for. And by the end of the year, I would say it's quite doable and realistic to be able to squat three plates for 10 reps or squat it the same way I squat two plates. On squats, I haven't really lost too much strength compared to when I was bulking because when I was at the peak of my bulk, that is when I first started hitting legs and squatting seriously because before that I would kind of do it on and off and I would be skipping legs. But if you are on a cut and it's not a crazy caloric deficit, which is obviously not advisable, then the rate at which you gain muscle or gain strength is a lot slower compared to when you are in a bulk. But it's not impossible to get stronger on a cut and it's not impossible to build muscle on a cut. It's just the rate at which you do it relative to if you are in a bulk is a lot slower. And when you are bulking, I would say the maximum amount of body fat you would want to go up to is probably 18 to 20 percent, where 20 percent is kind of pushing it. Because beyond that, the rate at which you can grow muscle is capped if you are natural, obviously. And the rate at which you gain strength is also capped, meaning you reach a point of diminishing returns where you'd be sacrificing your health for such a minimal amount of gaining strength and gaining muscle. Moving on to RDLs, again, just like the deadlifts, I start off with one plate aside and move up in intervals of 10 on each side. I would say when you're doing an RDL, you don't want the bar to go too far down to the point where it turns into a stiff-legged deadlift. I would say you'd want to stop just past your knees. It's also advisable to go around 50 to 70% of your deadlift weight on RDLs. But I tried to match it and it didn't feel too bad. This is because instead of allowing for the floor to stop the weight, you have to stop it halfway down and then get it back up. With these sorts of statistics or guidelines, you shouldn't really depend 100% on them because they are an average, meaning they will vary for individuals. So if you do feel comfortable doing a certain weight, do it. If you don't, don't do it. And in this case, I did feel as if this is a good top set. I have also gotten rid of the habit or at least decreased it quite a bit of overextending at the top of the movement. And this isn't good because it can put excessive strain on your back when you're at the top of the movement, meaning your risk of injury is increased. In this leg day, three out of the four exercises I do are not unilateral, meaning they're not performed by one leg at a time. This means that I can develop muscle imbalances especially in the glutes and the hamstrings because the only unilateral exercise I can do is the leg extension because you can do one-legged leg extensions. So if you do feel as if you have muscle imbalances in your hamstrings and your glutes, then doing glute bridges or single-legged glute bridges can help with this. And to eliminate muscle imbalances in your hamstrings, doing a lying hamstring curl or a seated hamstring curl with one leg at a time can also help. 
finishing off with leg extensions. I'll start off with the full stack and take that till failure, which is usually around eight to 10 reps. Then I'll drop it to half the weight. And on the first couple reps when I've done the drop set, I would explode with my legs as hard as I can and as explosively as I can. And you'd almost want to get the leg extension to fly up a bit. And then you want to catch it with your legs. And if you try to do this for every single rep on the drop set, the massive burn that you'll feel in your quads becomes very painful. And it really becomes a matter of a mental game if you are going to keep on pushing through that burn. And then once I can't really get the weight up anymore on the drop set, I'll go and help with my hand for an extra 10 reps. But instead of doing this three times altogether, I'd rather do two sets of these types of leg extensions and then two sets of Bulgarian split squats. I hope this video helped. Make sure you like and subscribe and chat to you later.